number 42 this is a band that is of its time in 1985 this is the power station some like it hot which i do i prefer this one to bang a gong i like this uh you know an original song by the power station uh did you what what were your, what were your thoughts on power station especially they played live aid and you were you were there so were you uh were you a fan of duran duran and and there's the offshoot was the was the station all in on this um well i mean i'm gonna go old school here and start with robert palmer yeah. Yeah, okay you know who i robert palmer was someone we lost way too young and he made some great records and going back to my you know indoctrination into that fm radio thing sneaking sally through the alley <laughs> you know, um what a great record um so you know being a fan of robert palmer and then the duran duran guys forming like the first super group of like the 80s that nobody really saw coming that was just um fucking cool man you know and <laughs> yeah. who will ever forget those videos um those iconic you know dancing guitar girls in the background um so yeah you know yeah. um tony thompson the yeah. drummer from chic and the taylor, the taylor uh brothers and yeah it was it, it was great tony thompson added everything to that i mean i think he he really i mean he made their sound yeah, Power Station was all yeah. a lot of drums. They relied on uh, Tony Thompson did the heavy heavy lifting on on those songs. Yeah. Those singles. Yeah, but as far as the videos, it was all the the Taylor brothers. <laughs> They're not brothers. <laughs> That's I They're, can't. All three of them are Taylors. Uh, yeah. uh, I can't, I call them all bro. I'll always call them brothers. No, but but uh, Robert Palmer is a great frontman too. Yeah. Yeah, and that was he has a great I, presence. I, I would imagine you were disappointed then when you get to see Power Station at Live Aid and it's not Robert Palmer. Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I don't have much of a memory of that day, to be honest with you, other than the fact that it was about 98 degrees and it was like humid and it was um, a work day and it was chaotic and um, a lot of it was like, um, you know, the sort of like not being out in the crowd and you're working basically in a, in a, in a room, you know, where you'd have to like run out to catch some of the, the, of the performances, but then get back into your little hole to like yeah. do radio, a, a remote from Philadelphia back to New York at that time was challenging. You don't just get to enjoy it as an audience member. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, I curated the HF Festival for 12 years at RFK Stadium in the 90s. That was, wow, those were iconic festivals. Those are amazing. Yeah, all those. yeah so I, I booked the, uh, the bands for that. Um, and that was sort of, that's another story. But <laughs> I know, I want to hear about those shows because that mid-90s at HFS yeah so a hundred thousand kids at the these shows well at rfk it was sixty thousand. the okay. biggest one we did was the year we did it in baltimore at where the ravens play now that was ninety thousand. <laughs> um, but the shows sold out every year yeah. um my point being though it's like i did not see a lot of it yeah 